What have you been up to that's made you feel happy, healthy, fit and strong? Maybe it's something that you ate or an activity that you did, something you did different, something you did new, something that you absolutely love to do and managed to do it again. So what have you done in the last week that has made you feel happy, healthy, fit, strong? What's helped your well-being? What's made you feel good about yourself? Speak to the person that you're with, write it down if you're on your own or comment or chat, whatever it might be, depending on what you're using. What have you done? And then we're gonna make a start on today's fantastic lesson, which is looking at our treats. So for me, this week I have done some running and I've done some exercise as well at home when the weather wasn't too great. And I managed to build a snowman. We had a little bit of snow, built a snowman. So I was outside playing in the snow and had lots and lots of fun. Okay, today's lesson is called Treat Detecting. We are going to be thinking about how much sugar we should have and where it comes from. So how much in our food and drinks and can we reduce the amount that we have? Before we start, big shout out to Miss Smith's class at Stanford and to Kestrel class at Enfield as well. I know you guys are watching. So make sure that we are working really, really hard. We've got shout outs to Jonah, to Charlotte and Olivia and to anyone else who's watching at home. Tag, tag your friends in. Put it in the chat as well and we give you shout outs as we go. So fantastic work. Let's have a little look about how we can reduce the amount of sugar that we're having and be detectives today. So get your magnifying glasses ready. Before we begin, we're going to recap our four fundamentals, the four main areas. So we've got eat well, show me the action that you remember from last time. If you're watching this for the first time today, have a look at some of our old videos as well where we go through these in more detail. Also eat well, we're cutting up our food, eating that. Drink well, what are we doing for drink well? Turning on the tap. Filling up our glass of water, having a nice big drink, well done, move well, jogging on the spot, we're doing our star jumps, and sleep well, getting our pillow ready, getting our really nice, relaxing sleep. Let's go through those quickly. I've covered up a new area today, the blue area that's got foods that are full of calcium and protein in there as well, things like yogurt and milk and alternatives in there. So what area have I covered up? What's it called? And Let's look at the other areas as well, the green area, fruits and vegetables. We can have loads and those, loads of those. We're going to see if we can find out if there's any sugar in those today. Our starchy carbohydrates, bread, pastas, potatoes, rice, cereals. Are there any sugars in those ones? We'll find out today as well. And our pink areas are protein. So throughout all those areas, we are going to make sure that our bodies are strong. So our protein is those building blocks, helps us grow muscle and grow bigger and taller. Our yellow area are starchy carbohydrates that gives us energy long lasting energy to play all day our green area are fruits and vegetables give us vitamins and minerals to stay healthy boost our immune system so we're not feeling poorly as often and our blue area those who guessed it correctly is the dairy area so dairy alternatives that allow us to have calcium and extra proteins and sugars in our body that can help us stay nice and healthy help us have healthy bones and teeth as well so our drink well area, how many glasses of water should we have in a day? We want to feel hydrated. We don't want to feel thirsty. We don't want to have headaches or stomach aches. We want to have energy. We want to help our body function really, well, really, really well. All the organs and bits inside our body, all the way to our hair, our toenails, our fingernails, all our skin is helped by water. So we are trying to have how many cups of water a day? How many do you think it might be? I've got my water with me here. I'm taking my sips. A little experiment for you might be to fill up a cup of water and see how many times that needs to go into your water bottle or the other way around. Fill up your water bottle, pour it into cups. How many does it fill up? How many water bottles are you having a day? That's what you're drinking from. The correct answer was six to eight cups a day. So can we spread those out throughout the day? Small amounts every so often throughout the day with our meals in between when we're feeling a bit thirsty or even before that when we can, so we don't feel thirsty throughout the day. Our next one, move well, being active. How many minutes should we aim to be active every day? Have you been doing it? Have you managed to do it? Have you managed to get all of those minutes in? We're gonna do a one minute mover right now. So everyone up, standing nice and tall. Make sure you've got a nice bit of space. Make sure that you're ready. Make sure that you've got nothing you might trip over on the floor. And today we're gonna to go to the park. So we're gonna run down to the park. So we're jogging on the spot, jogging around, making sure we've got loads of room next to us. We're jogging on the spot. I'm gonna do one minute to get our heart beating really, really fast. 
using all our muscles. So the first thing we're going to do to the park is we're going to climb up the ladder to the slide and we're going to slide right down. Climb up again, right up to the top and slide down. We're going to do two more of those, climbing up and sliding down. The last one, put your arms up this one, whee, all the way down that slide. We're jogging again to the next one. The next one's going to be the roundabout. We're going to go round the roundabout three times in one way and then three times the other way. So we're working our balance as well. We're using our muscles in different ways. We're going to go round one, two, three. Try not to get too dizzy. We're all going back the other way. One, two, three. Oh, fantastic. Okay. We're going to have a run along. I'm going to have a sit down. I'm going to sit on the swings. So we're going backwards and forwards on the swings. Backwards and forwards. Moving on that swing. And the last one we go on the seesaw. So we're going to go down and up, down and up, down and up, down and up. And jog on the spot all the way home. We're ready for a nice healthy snack and get going. So our heartbeat should be increased, should be easy to feel. We should be a little bit more out of breath, might be a bit warmer. We're starting to feel a bit happier, a bit loosened up, and we're ready to do some more learning as well. So when we exercise like that, our brains get into gear. We're prepared, we can take on a bit more information. We feel a bit better about ourselves. The blood gets flowing around our body, including to our brain. So we can focus and we can learn really, really well. So we're moving well. And we're aiming to do 60 minutes of that a day. So it might be that you go to the park for half an hour and then you ride your bike for half an hour. That's fantastic. Every single day, what can you do that you enjoy, that gets your heart beating faster, that gets your muscles working and gets you out of breath for a bit? And then if you've done that every day, when it comes to the end of the day, you might start to feel nice and tired, nice and sleepy, be ready to sleep well and wind down. So for sleeping well, how many hours was it? I'll give you that clue at the start when we're making our pillow. We're going to make sure that we're cleaning our teeth. We've got our pyjamas on, we're nice and comfy. Our bed is comfy. The room's nice and dark and quiet. We might have a story, try and reduce our screen time just before bed. So we might listen to a story, read a book ourselves. And we're trying to have 10 to 12 hours of sleep. So we're getting our rest. That way we can grow, we can remember all what we've learned, we'll be ready for the, next, for the next day with lots and lots of energy. So let's have a little look at today's lesson, becoming a treat detective. As you can see on here, I've got lots of different foods and packages, lots of different examples of sugar there. So we're thinking about sugar today and we're trying to find out a little bit more about it and be detectives and try and spot where some of our sugar comes from. So let's learn a little bit about it. We get sugar from all sorts of different foods. So we get sugar from most of the things that we eat and drink and our bodies use that sugar to give us energy like we've learned a bit about before. So there are different types of sugar. And we're going to go through those different types today and think about how our bodies use them, where we get them from in different foods or different products that we have. And then we're thinking about how we can manage what we intake. So first type of sugar that we're going to talk about is fructose. This is sugar from fruit. So I've got my apple here. Fructose from fruit. You got fruit sound at the start. So that's going to be fantastic if we're having a whole apple. Not going to be too bad for us at all. So we can have those fructoses from fruits quite readily, and we have them in lots of different fruits and vegetables that we have. Anything that tastes sweet or juicy might have that fructose in it, and our body can use that. So these are natural sugars, but sometimes people take those natural sugars and put them into other products. So we're going to be detectives today and see if we can find some of those. We're going to think about which natural sugars have been added so that the companies can say it contains natural sugars, but really it's just been taken out all of the sugary bits rather than all the healthy vitamins and minerals we're getting from there as well. So they rise our body's uh, blood sugar levels and give us a bit of energy. But this stuff, glucose, gives us even more energy. So things like bread and our starchy foods like pasta and potatoes will give us a nice bit of long lasting energy. So our, I didn't really know there was sugar in bread. You might not think about it. It doesn't necessarily always taste sweet. You can get sweet breads, but a normal slice of white bread, if you leave it in your mouth for long enough and you just you want to keep it in your mouth that's one you can start to taste a few of those sugars being released so our bodies really like this energy source it's a nice long lasting energy and they can break it down slowly if we have too much of it at once then our bodies get a bit overwhelmed it's a bit tough for them so we're trying to have it throughout the day and it might be a part of our every meal it might be part of our snacks and our bodies can break it down gently and get it to our blood to build up enough sugar in our blood to give us that energy to play energy to learn energy to think and concentrate and grow and change and do all the things that we need to do. So we're trying to find our good energy balance. 
our next one, sucrose. That's our household sugar. That's what we think about when we have our sugar cubes or our added sugar. That's a mixture of the two. So that's when someone's taken the fruit sugars and those blood sugars from our starches, those um, fructose and glucose, they've mixed them together. And in some places it, it does occur naturally. So things like sugar beet, it can, it can occur naturally, but sometimes it can be made artificially as well. And when we've got those two together, it can be added to products. That can be hard for our bodies to cope with because naturally they like absorbing that sugar from the bread. The stuff from the fruit, it comes a little, little bit differently. So if both of them come at once, it opens that doorway and it can all flood through. And it finds, our bodies find that hard to cope with. They find it hard to process. And that's when it gets stored as fat much easier. So we're trying to watch out for some of these kinds of sugars and not have too many of them because our bodies don't respond as well to those as they do some of the others. The last sugar type we've got there was lactose from milk. So we like the sweetness of milk. We like that milk has some nice sugars to give us a bit of energy. We like that they have uh, proteins in them to help them grow and stay strong. And we like they have calcium in them. So we're making sure that we are having a bit more milk. Because when you're younger, when you've got growing bones, remember last week, we put our arms out compared to our adults and we saw that they were going to get bigger and bigger. And they were going to grow longer. So we're trying to find out today about which kind of sugars we can have lots of, which ones we need to reduce, and how that best balance is. If you don't have milk, so maybe you're lactose intolerant or maybe you're vegan, you can get those kind of benefits, so things like the calcium and the proteins from other sources as well. So you might get those added into things like almond milk or rice milk. You might get them from leafy greens and different vegetables. You might get those proteins from chickpeas or if you're lactose intolerant, you still eat meat, you might get it from those meat products as well. So how does sugar make us feel? Can you comment to the adult that you're with? How does sugar make you feel? Write it in the chat box, write it on the comments. How does sugar make you feel? How do you feel when you've had lots of sugar? I know I've gone to a party once and there was a big buffet and it was great. There were cakes, there were chocolate. And you know what? I thought, I'm going to have a bit of these. All my friends were there, we were playing and I had a bit of cake, some sweets, some snacks, fizzy drink, everything. And at the time, as it went into my mouth, it was really sweet. I thought it tasted really, really good. I noticed my friends were having a little bit less. They were having some different things. They were taking their time, but I was ready. And I was going, I was onto the play area and I was kicking a ball about and running in the ball pool and dancing around, jumping all over the place, getting a bit hyper. And then I started to have a bit of a tummy ache and I started to get a bit tired. And then all my friends started to go and play because I've been playing without them. And then I didn't have the energy to play with them. And I felt a bit sad and upset and a bit cranky. So I had too much sugar too early and my body couldn't cope with it. It started to feel a bit poorly and my stomach was working overtime to try and process all that sugar. Whereas my friends had balanced out and they got to play. So I learned that day to balance my sugars and to think about being healthy and having those right amounts. So the NHS are saying that we're eating twice as much sugar as we should be doing, especially children. And part of that is because we don't know what contains sugar and how much is in it, which is why we're being detectives today. We're trying to find out how much sugar is in our foods, how much we're supposed to have, and how we can make those sensible, healthy choices to help us stay nice and healthy, nice and fit and strong and happy as well. So let's have a little look about choosing the right sugars. So our lactose and our fructose, those kind of sugars that we see regularly and things like milk and fruit, they're okay to have. They're not added sugars, they're already there. They exist within that food, within that product. So that is something that we're okay to have. Things like milk and plain yogurt and fruits and vegetables, we can eat those sugars and we can have them as part of our fibre day or as part of our healthy diet that we're going to help uh, give us energy and help our bodies function. And we definitely love the vitamins and minerals we get from those kind of things. So vitamin C to boost our immune system and calcium to help us have strong teeth and bones. So it's not those ones that we need to worry about too much. Today we're looking at those added sugars. So added sugars are going to be things that are added to food. So during the uh, processing of the food, when they're made in the factory, uh, during cooking food, when it's baked or when it's put in the oven or whatever it might be into a sauce, and also before you're eating it. So anything that you might sprinkle on top. So we're gonna think about those added ones. And we're gonna think about where they come from. So whereabouts are these added sugars coming from? Where do we get them? How are they there? Why are they there? And what can we do about that? So you might not realize it, but there's sugars in a lot of the things that you eat. A lot of things that are advertised 
and you know designed to be really really tasty when you have them so things like um flavored yogurts breakfast cereals sauces ketchup things like that they will have added sugars so we need to make sure that we're spotting those that we can identify how we can deal with those things so having them less often in smaller amounts or making sensible choices as well so what happens if we have too much of those sugars if we have too much sugar in our body we can get a buildup of internal fat so if our bodies can't process if they can't turn it into energy quick enough so if we're not being as active or if we're having too much at once then our bodies will store it they'll keep it there because they can't do anything else with it they haven't got enough capacity to process those sugars so we are going to end up with a buildup of internal fat as you can see in the picture it builds up around the organs it makes it really really hard for our body to work now if i cut myself if i get a bruise i can see that and i know what to do i know to put an ice pack on it or a plaster or to look after it or to go and wash it out whatever i can do and i can see it if i touch something sharp and my i cut my finger i know not to do that again because i can see it straight away it's a reminder Whereas with sugar, we don't get that visual reminder. We can't see it. So we have to work really, really hard to understand what's happening inside our bodies. And that's why we're being detectives today. We're trying to find out which things can damage us without us necessarily seeing it. And it might only be further down the line when we have, maybe our heart isn't working as well as it should, or some of our organs aren't struggling to, you know, they're not, they are struggling to work and support us, that we can think, how can I make sure that I'm being really healthy? What can I do now? to make sure I'm happy, healthy, fit and strong for many, many years to come. So we're trying to reduce that amount of sugar so that we don't get those buildups. Also, if our bodies can't manage those sugar levels very well, they can't get the right amounts of insulin in them, we can't process it properly. So we need to be careful that we don't have too much sugar that causes our bodies to let the wrong sugars through and not let us control how much energy we have. So we don't want spikes of being hyper and feeling really, really tired. And also, we're going to protect our teeth. So we're trying to reduce the amount of sugar that we drink, and that includes things like fruit juices. And we're trying to make sure that we're cleaning our teeth regularly and that we're eating sugars that our bodies can have in the stomach. So if I eat my apple and I take a bite out of it and I start to chew it, I can swallow it and my body will start to absorb those juices from the fruit, of fructose. If I have a drink of orange juice it goes straight the sugars are already broken down they're already broken down and put into the bottle so they go straight into my teeth they can start to damage my teeth and then i'll swallow it and my body will still have to process it as well so we're thinking about those healthy choices what can we do so how much sugar should we have you can see here i've got an example here so this is your recommended daily allowance so this here six cubes of sugar Seems like quite a lot. I never just sit there and eat that. But you'd be surprised and we'll figure out today how quickly we can have that into our bodies. And that's what we should have over, over one day. Not more than that. If we have less than that, that's brilliant. We can still function well. We can still have plenty of energy. But we're trying to find out whether maybe some of us are eating too much or whether we're going extra healthy and having a little bit less, especially for those added sugars. So that's six sugar cubes a day. I'll try and remember that and I'll, rem I'll remind you of that as well. And there's our visual reminder. If you think there's something I refer to or something that we explore that has around that, we can have a think about it. So here's a challenge for you. How can we find out how much sugar is in our food? How do I know when I get my orange juice? How can I find out how much sugar is in here? If I pick up a smoothie part of my meal deal and I think, you know what, that looks good. Looks like it's healthy, blue shard, loads of vitamins, fruits in there. Which one, what part of this packaging is going to help me find out? Have a think, put it in the chat box, put it in the comments. What can help us to find out how much is in my food? So if I've got a product like this, it doesn't really tell me much on it. Let's have a little look. So you might see this guide on here and you can see it on the bottom of this one right there you can see some of those colors so we are thinking about becoming treat detectives and we can spot this part of our packaging that you can see on my screen here you can spot that on lots and lots of packages they have to have it this bottle of coca-cola's got it on the side there it's got green green red green so there's different areas on there fats saturates 
sugars and salt. Today we're focusing on our sugars. So we are making sure that we are not having too much sugar in our diet. And those colours remind us of something. If we think that red one is our least healthy option, so that's more than 22 and a half grams per 100 grams. Orange in the middle, so that's between the two. And then green at the other end, less than five grams. What do they remind us of? What do they look like? Red, amber, green. You might see them around at all sorts of places. You might see them on warnings. You might see them on signposts. You might see them on traffic lights. So we're going to think of our traffic light system of red, amber, and green to help us learn and help us make healthy choices today. So the traffic lights, red, amber, and green. We've got our extra sugars, our medium sugars, and our low sugars. So when we're thinking about that traffic light, we're thinking red means stop, think about it. Is that the right thing to be doing? Can I have smaller amounts? Can I reduce that amount? Amber, go slow. You're on your way to having lots of sugar. Can we take it steady? Can we have a little look at the right amounts? Can we make sure we're paying attention to that? And green, go for it. That's a nice, healthy option. You made a good choice there. It's gonna give you the right amount of energy that you can balance your day throughout. So let's have a think about that throughout our detective journey right now. On the back of your product, you might have all sorts of information as well, telling you about the different amounts there that will help you find out per 100 grams or per serving. And we're going to be detectives with those today as well. So we're going to explore some foods and drinks together. That little reminder that we've got around six sugar cubes is our daily allowance. So how can we spread out those throughout the day? Because I like eating the occasional treat. I like making sure that I'm enjoying my food and sugar tastes good. It tastes sweet and it gives us that feeling that makes us want more of it. So how can we still get that feeling and still have nice things and still have tasty treats, but limit it so we're not having too much or we're not damaging our teeth or making ourselves a bit unhealthy on the inside. So let's have a little look at our orange juice today. If I look at my packaging, I can see on my orange juice that the top two areas are nice and green, the bottom area is green, my sugar one is orange. In here, it says 13 grams of sugar, but that's only in half the bottle. So I, if I have this whole bottle, then I am having this much sugar. If we count them out as well, one, two, three, four, five, six and a half, it's already more than my daily allowance just in one bottle of orange juice. Now, some of those fruit sugars will be okay. And this is going to be one of my five a day if I have it. But we shouldn't have more than one of our five a day portions coming from drinks. So we need to think about fruits and vegetables that are going to give us those sugars and those vitamins for our five a day as well. But if I have too much of that orange juice, it's going to damage my tea. Because again, that sugar has been broken down already before it comes into my body. So can I have a small amount? Could I maybe have half of the bottle? So then even then I'm still having about three sugar cubes. Can I have maybe a quarter of the bottle mixed with some water or maybe just a couple of sips? If I have it with my food, my body can digest this a lot easier as well. So we can start to get the benefits out of it. If I have this with cereal, those things work together to give me a better release of energy and get all those vitamins in as well. So think about when and where we're having and how much we're having of these things. The next one we're going to look at, tomato ketchup. So for this one, if I am having my tomato ketchup, I'm being a treat detective, I'm looking at that packaging. Tomato ketchup doesn't have one on the front. It doesn't have those things there. It's red and on the back, so it says per 100 grams, of which sugars, 22.8 grams. So that means that it falls into this category of being a red food. So it's a lot of sugar in there. In fact, even if I just have one squidge of ketchup, one serving size, so like the small pot in my picture there that you might get if you go for some chips or whatever it might be, you might be adding a cube and a half of sugar. So that's a lot of sugar to add into something that you might think is just tomatoes, which are a fruit, or lots of people have them with their vegetables as well. So can we think about being healthy, and maybe having smaller amounts, or, which we'll talk about later, snack swaps. You might start thinking now, I know there's a tomato ketchup I can have that has less sugar. I know there's something I can have that isn't 
as sweet and doesn't have as much added sugar to it as that one. Our next one here, our yogurt. 0% fat. We're fantastic at being fat detectives. It's written on the front, 0% fat. I know there's no fat in here, and we don't want that build of fat. So sometimes choosing those lower fat options is a good idea. But sometimes when they have lower fat, they have higher sugar. And that's why we're being treat detectives today. That's why we're having a little look at those packaging, those labels, and we're spotting how much goes into it. What's that extra sugar? So in a small pot of yogurt that you might get in your fridge, there might be one serving size, 150 grams, it can be 18 grams of sugar. So again, that 18 grams of sugar is nearly all of our allowance. It's four and a half sugar cubes. So if I think that that much sugar goes into my pot of yogurt, which might only be that tall, I need to be really, really careful about the amounts I'm having and which one I'm choosing. So natural yogurt and plain yogurt with a bit of chopped up fruit into it might be a much healthier option for me. And it might help me go from being in that red area down to amber, down to green. And we're choosing about our healthy snack swap. So how much sugar is in our product? How much is in the one that you're having? So a good challenge for you today after this lesson might be to go and find some of these products around the house. Find out how much is in a serving and how much you usually have. Measure out what a spoonful of yogurt is compared to how much you put in a bowl. And that's really, really important with some of our other things as well. If I look at the blue machine fruit smoothie, this one here, fruit smoothies full of fruits, boosted with vitamins, it's got loads and loads of good stuff in there. And again, it can have loads of good stuff, especially if we're eating those fruits whole, where we can get all of the vitamins and minerals in them, and our bodies can break down those sugars on the inside. If I have it just like this, those sugars have already been broken down, they can damage my teeth. And the amount of sugar in one of the smaller bottles, like in my picture, is way more than our daily recommended amount. So a 360 milliliter bottle will have 36 grams of sugar in, nine sugar cubes. Again, loads more, 150% of what I should be having each day. That's a lot of sugar to have in one drink. So I'm trying to reduce the amount I have. Maybe I have those on rare occasions or in smaller amounts or mixed with a bit of water. Maybe I can make my own. If I get some of those fruits, put some natural yogurt in there and start to make my own smoothies, I can control the amount of sugar that goes in there. I can control what I'm having and I can start to move down that scale. So think about what you're having and how much of it you're having. If you get a bottle like this, how many servings are in it? Can you be that treat detective that spots how many portions? And we looked about portions last week, so we know that we can have certain amounts of things throughout the day. How many portions are within there? It might tell you on that packet, or it might tell you on one of the things that you've got in your household that you spot as well. So, speaking of portions, 30 grams of cereal is eight grams. So, in my cereal here, just in one little bowl, I've got a couple of sugar cubes. Now this one, I might have a bowl of more than 30 grams. I might add some milk to it, so there's extra sugars coming into it through that. I might have um, a glass of orange juice. So imagine that glass of orange juice on the morning, a couple of uh, cubes of sugar there. By eight o'clock in the morning, I might have had all my daily allowance of sugar. And then from then on, my body really needs me to be active to work off that sugars, or it needs me to slow down and spread those sugars out so that I can balance. You might have loads of ideas of healthy changes you can make. One thing I like to do is add a couple of bits of cereal together. So I might have some Weetabix and I might have some Cheerios mixed in. I might have a couple of bits of that in there so that I'm still getting those benefits of that flavour, but I'm not getting all that sugar mixed in. And I'm thinking about making healthy changes and healthy swaps. Baked beans, our small tin of baked beans right here, this much, which you're going to comfortably have on your plate, has nearly two sugar cubes in it. So just a small tin of baked beans. Again, one of your five a day, but it's got that rich tomato sauce that's got some added sugars into it. So if I, if I look at the ingredients, and I'm being that detective and I look on the back, the ingredients are beans. So about half of it is beans, 49%. Tomatoes, about a third, 35%. Water, okay, water's good for me. Then the next ingredient, sugar. So those top four ingredients, one of them is sugar. When you look at the ingredients, when you're being a detective, those ingredients are listed in order. So the biggest one, the one that's got the most first, is listed at the top and they go down. The lower down that list, the smaller the amount is. So if that sugar's near the top of that list, 
and then it's added in there. If it's there at all, then it's been added into it. So we're trying to reduce the amount, and again, you might think of some snack swaps we can have. Our Coca-Cola. So you might have seen this before. This bottle's got four servings in it. You might have a 500 milliliter bottle like that, which is half of one of these. It's still supposed to have two servings in it, but let's be honest, when someone gets a bottle like that, they're really sharing it. It's something you might have, even if you don't have it all at once, you might finish it in a day. So one of those 500 milliliter bottles of Coke has all of this sugar in. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 and a half. That's a lot of sugar. That's, in fact, that's more than double what I should be having in a day in one drink. One amount of added sugars. So when they've mixed in some of those different types of sugars that we can find together, put it into that factory, add it into that processed food, and then I have it in my body, especially if I have that much at one time. So even that spread out the day would be too much for my body to handle. If I have it all at once, it's really, really tough for my body to process that, for my body to work around it and make sure that I'm being nice and healthy. So the energy that we're getting from that isn't going to last us as long as the energy that we can get from things like bread and potatoes and rice and pasta and things like apples and oranges and strawberries. So can we try and think about how much we're having and reduce it? So a question for you, how can we reduce the amount of sugar that we have? How can we lower that level? What can we do? So put it in the comments, put it in the chat, speak to you that you're with. What can we do to do it? Some of you might have had a couple of clues when I've showed you these kind of things, when I've showed you some of our options. So can we reduce it? What can we do? Let's have a think. So we're thinking about eating less often, small amounts and reducing that sugar. Lots of our products have those sugar swaps in them. I've done that already. So we can get ketchup now with 50% less sugar than before. So that amount has dropped by half, which is fantastic news. Especially if I'm being smart and being a treat detective as well, knowing that that sugar's there in the first place, then I've reduced it. Then I can control the amount that I have as well. I can start to make nice, healthy snack swaps. So again, my beans, I can get 50% less sugar beans now as well. I'm going to reduce salt. Another one of our treats that we need to have not too much of in our diet. So our beans, we can get reduced sugar options, 50% less. So from it going and being a medium one or a relatively low, a higher one on our low scale, it might be something that we can reduce, something that we can drop in half, and then we get our sugars elsewhere throughout the day. Things like fruit cordial, we might be able to add a bit of that to our water, but we can get ones with no added sugar. Remember it says added sugars that are damaging our body, those ones that we can't really see the effects of. So can we reduce those amounts? Remember our traffic light system, our red, amber, green. We're going to think a little bit about that when it comes to making snack swaps and changes. So rather than going for the super sweet cereal, can I make a snack swap that brings me down the line? So remember, more than 22 and a half grams per 100 grams is red. Our orange one, it's medium between the two and our lower one is going to be less than five grams per 100 grams. So for us, five grams per 100 grams probably looks a little bit like that. So can we make it lower? Can we make those changes? Let's have a think about what we might do. If I've got Coca-Cola as my red option, I might go to squash. So a diluted fruit cordial as my orange option. And then my green option might just be water. So can we think about making those snack swaps? Can we change it? Can we think, you know what? Today, I'm not gonna have that choice. I'm gonna make this choice. If you're already making this choice, can you move on to that choice? Can you better yourself? Can you make an improvement that will help your body stay happy, healthy, fit and strong? Which is what we want to do. We want to feel good about ourselves. We want to have the energy to play. We want to go and see our friends and not be poorly as often and be able to play and grow big and strong. So instead of reaching for the biscuits, which will be our red area, can we find a suitable orange choice? Might be something like crackers or a different snack that's lower in sugar, lower in salt. Or if you want to go super green, you might get a cucumber, slice it up, make a dip, have some fruit pieces, whatever it could be, and think about having a green choice. Another one that we talked about before, our cereals. So you might go from a red one, which has lots of sugar in, to an orange one. You might make that choice. And for you, that's a great healthy step. A great decision that you've made in making a snack swap. So our orange ones, things like Cheerios, which have whole grains and fewer sugars, 
fantastic. Even better could be something like porridge or Weetabix. So we're making that change from red to amber to green and slowly we're giving ourselves more energy, more long lasting energy and a better balance in our diets. So it might be that you're reaching for the sugary sweets and you swap those for a fruit bar. Or even then you might swap that for fruits. So we're getting down that scale and we're getting healthier each time. Remember our eat well guide that we talked about, that we think about our different areas. If you look for the sugars on there, the sugary foods. So we've got our starchy carbohydrates, which have some sugars in them, long lasting energy. We've got our fructose, our green area, which gives us nice energy and tastes good and helps us get those vitamins and minerals into our body. But our sugars are actually off the screen. You can see them right down in that corner. They're off the, they're off the plate. They're not on there because we're eating those less often in small amounts. And that's our thing today. So can we eat less often in small amounts? Can we replace those bits that will be our red area with things from the yellowy starchy carbohydrates or the green fruits and vegetables area on there? So let's have a little think about what we've been covering today. How much sugar should we have? What is it? It's the stuff that gives us energy and we're trying to limit it to no more than six sugar cubes or six teaspoons a day. We know that that is in all sorts of food and drinks in different amounts. So we're trying to limit how many we have. We're trying to manage it and be detective so that we can spot how much is in there in the first place. And how can we reduce that? We can make snack swaps. So we can think about stopping at that red light, getting ready at that orange light and going at that green one. Which one are you gonna to do today? Are you gonna make a snack swap? Are you gonna make a change? Are you gonna make a small difference that will help you have lots and lots of energy? I've got a challenge for you. So be a treat detective. Go and find a packet that has some sugar in. Go and write down how much sugar is in a portion, how much sugar is in uh, 100 grams, and see where it falls on our scale of how much we should be having. Is it a high food? Can you find out from the label whether it's green, whether it's amber, whether it's red? Could you find three different foods around your house that have those labels on? Can you find what else is in that food if it's low? Or what else is in that food if it's high? How can we be detected and really look at those food labels that give us all the information that we need? Another one is plan a snack swap that you can do. What choice can you make today? How can you change what you've done? How can you say, today I made a healthy snack swap. I went from a higher sugar to a lower sugar option. It doesn't have to be that you're used to eating the red foods and you go all the way down to green. Make a change that you're happy with that you can do, that's realistic and that you still enjoy, and then let us know comment, put your answers below, put your comments, put your examples on the Facebook chat, on the YouTube page, on Zoom chat, whatever it might be, write them down, give them to your teachers, send it in an email, whatever it might be, and then we'll be able to share some of those things as well. So thank you so much for taking part today. We will be here for another lesson next week. There'll be more on our YouTube page as well. Our previous lessons are on there, as well as loads of healthy activities for you to be trying out at home. We have got some extra resources as well if you want those please, please, please let us know if we'll be able to send those to you and spread the word as well. Let's see how many people we can get making healthy choices, being nice and active and finding that energy balance for them, being treat detectives, finding out how much sugar's in their foods and how they can change those. Thank you so much for listening. You've been fantastic. And I will see you next time. Stay safe and have lots and lots of fun.